My name is Cam Anderson. I'm the owner and sole employee of Blacktail Studio, a small one-man woodworking shop that's kind of turned into a woodworking shop and social media channel, YouTube channel. So I, uh, I'm always trying to learn. I'm trying to get better at woodworking, and when I learn something, I try to share it with others. Well, the reason I started using the Wagner is because I found the wood supplier that I go to, he uses Wagner, and I tend to defer to the experts. If I didn't know anything about moisture meters, I asked Aaron if a Gobi, you know, what do you use? And as I understand it, Wagner is kind of the industry standard, and they use some handheld ones, but they also have some big ones in their kilns that they use. The Wagner being able to tell that moisture down inside the wood is just critical for me, and also being able to trust it, because there's other ones out there that claim that, but they don't have the reputation that Wagner does, so you don't know if the reading they're giving you is actually correct or not. I, I did a video a couple years ago uh, where I was curious what the moisture content of Home Depot wood was. And to do that, I had to go a little bit back to my college, you know, science days of like, how am I gonna do a scientific study on this? And I needed to take samples from, I ended up being several hundred boards over, I think seven or so different stores across the state. And I'm like, oh, it's gonna be a nightmare for me to longhand add all this in there. And I'd already owned the Wagner up at that point. And I realized, luckily before I started this, that the Wagner has some built-in smart feature that will, you can just take a reading, take a reading, take a reading, and it basically puts it all into a file for you. And I'm probably dumbing this down a little bit more than it is, but it'll export it all in one thing so I can have all of the Tiger at Oregon stores, you know, lows in one file and not have to longhand everything out. So that was really cool. So if you have big jobs or big stacks of lumber, or big, you know, if you want to get readings from an entire tree and have them all localized in one file, that was really cool to have. I only work woodwork in Oregon, so I generally know what the equilibrium moisture is now, but it's a pretty cool feature to be able to tell what the wood needs to be dried to you know, in your living room versus your shop versus wherever. So for me, it stays pretty consistent, but I think it's a pretty cool feature that Wagner added is that uh, equilibrium moisture content reading to tell the moisture in say your shop versus your living room. So I use the Wagner Orion 950. This one is similar to some of the other ones. It can do the, it can sense the moisture, I believe a quarter inch and also three quarter inch, which not all of them are the same. So I like the ones that can get down inside the wood as far as you can, because a lot of the slabs I have, two and a half, three inches. So between flipping it over, you can pretty much get all the moisture content inside of that. And a lot of people don't know why you can't use wet wood. You know, they say, okay, so I got wet wood. Who cares? What, what, what's gonna happen? And the reason wood needs to be dry is it's going to, as it dries, it's going to move, it's gonna warp, it's gonna twist, it's gonna flex. And sometimes it's a lot, sometimes it's a little. It can even, certain areas will sink down. So it'll be like a depression in there, whereas as that moisture leaves one area, you know, maybe disproportionately, if you build the table perfectly square and flat, one area might be sunk. It would almost certainly bow and twist and crack and all kinds of horrible things. So what you need is that wood to be at equilibrium. And it's a term that gets thrown around a lot. And it just basically means it's never gonna be completely dry because right now there's moisture in the air. And I can actually tell you how much moisture is in the air is 14.1%. So what that's saying is if wood sat out here forever, it would never get drier than 14.1% if that stayed consistent the whole time. And what's important to note is this is different than our living room. What I'll do when I am buying slab is I always make sure to test the moisture all over because even reputable brands and especially non-reputable companies will intentionally or unintentionally mislead you or outright lie to you. If you don't own a moisture meter, what do you do if you're gonna buy something off Craigslist? And the very minimum I learned is don't ask them if it's dry, ask them when it was cut. And it doesn't mean that it will be dry, but I've learned that if you, I had a conversation with one guy and he said, uh, oh yeah, yeah, it's dry, it's ready to go. And I go, oh, okay. And we talked more and he's like, oh yeah, it's totally dry. We talked more and he goes, yeah, it was cut like two weeks ago. And I go, oh, okay. And so that's maybe a little red flag that it's definitely a bad one to use. That said is even at, you know, the really high dollar reputable shops, I've gotten slabs where maybe part of it's dry and then you go here and you go, hey, why is this 30%? And you go, oh, thanks for telling us. And then they can go and get it dry. But it is really, really important to make sure it's dry, not just in one spot, but all over and inside. 
The way this Wagner Orion works is you put a species code in, and I work a lot with walnut, so I, I just know that it's 0.55, which is what's almost always in my moisture meter. Redwood old growth, and that's old growth redwood. I didn't know there was a different one. There's redwood young growth. Hmm. So that's really cool. So I have a big chunk of old growth redwood, and the code for that is 0 0.40. So I'm gonna move this down. So it's set 0 0.40. And now, take this over to our slab. And as I understand it, you want some air behind the wood. So this one is leaning against, so it should be just fine. And you can see there, 9.3%. And like I mentioned, move it all around. And this is basically textbook perfect for Oregon. And this was, again, came from California. And what I've been told is a little bit drier is better than a little bit too wet. So sometimes they'll dry it a little bit further and that's generally okay because it'll kind of equalize in your shop. It'll kind of soak up that little bit of moisture, but it's really consistent. Nine, 10, like I mentioned, nine to 11 is pretty much standard for Oregon. And right now we've been at like basically nine to 10 and a half. So good job, GL Veneer Company down in California. Because it's really consistent. There's no, no pockets of trap moisture, which isn't a pretty thick slab, so that could happen. And that's how you use it. That's how you tech, check and make sure that the uh, wood is ready to work with.